Chapter 7, The Abra's Prophecy The sun beat down on Edison and his Pokemon as they hiked forward to Cerulean City. It had been a long, tiresome journey. The situation in Mount Moon left them weary enough, and that still only led them half of the way to the next city. They used this time to battle against passing trainers, but now they all wish they conserved their strength. All of the Pokemon were tired and in need of rest. Severus had it particularly bad. He had been training hard to catch up with the rest of the group, and was on the brink of exhaustion. It was not wasted effort, however. Neville the Kakuna finally reached his Beedrill stage. From the moment he broke free from his shell, Neville looked relieved and unsure. It was his first breath of fresh air in a week, but he looked uncomfortable with those large stingers. Slughorn guessed that Neville would soon miss that protective cocoon, especially when he realized his only defense now was a good offense. Neville didn't have the guts for battle. Not really. Now even Slughorn was done training. All he wanted was a refreshing stay at a Pokemon Center. They used the last of their potions yesterday, so they couldn't even use those for a pick-me-up. Up around the bend, a trainer stood in their way. A very familiar trainer. Neville, Hannah, and Severus showed no recognition, but Slughorn and Edison knew this trainer all too well. It was Dev, Edison's rival. And at his side was Charmander. They approached. While the humans conversed, Charmander approached Slughorn with a smile. Slughorn, said the Charmander. I didn't expect to run into you here. And look at that, you've evolved. Slughorn reluctantly smiled. It's good to see you, Charmander. And it was good. Sort of. Charmander's face was friendly, but the fire on his tail was an ominous reminder of their last fight, the only fight Slughorn ever lost. Dev pointed a finger at Edison, smirking. Then he took a Pokeball from his belt and held it up. It was a challenge. Charmander looked between Dev and Slughorn. Well, wait, he said. I don't want to battle you. Slughorn, you're worn out. It, it wouldn't be fair. Slughorn took a deep breath, knowing he would regret what came next. Battle isn't fair, Charmander, and we don't have a choice. We must battle, and battle with all we've got. He fixed Charmander with a steady gaze. Don't hold back. Make your trainer proud. But, but Slughorn, said Charmander, I'm stronger than last time. I've learned how to use my fire better. I could really hurt you. Slughorn smiled. I know you've gotten stronger, but so have I. Still looking nervous, Charmander stood by his trainer's side, and the battle began. Dev threw the Pokeball in his hand, releasing a Pidgeotto in a flash of light. Edison nodded to Slughorn to take the lead. Slughorn sized up his opponent. This Pidgeotto reminded him of the Spearow that nearly claimed his life before. The odds were against him, but he couldn't back down. Pidgeotto took to the sky and swooped down at Slughorn. He did his best to avoid the attacks, but Pidgeotto was fast. It landed several pecks on him, tearing at his leaves. The attacks hurt Slughorn more than he'd like to admit. But Slughorn had a plan. As Pidgeotto flew down for another assault, Slughorn shot a barrage of seeds from his flower. Several hit Pidgeotto, but they were too small to phase it. Pidgeotto clawed at Slughorn, knocking him to the ground as it flew back to the sky. Then the seeds took root in Pidgeotto's skin. Life energy was drawn from Pidgeotto and excreted from the seeds as a kind of pollen. This pollen gravitated towards Slughorn, showering him in rich, fresh energy. The pollen revitalized Slughorn as it weakened Pidgeotto. They continued to exchange blows, only now the match was much closer. Pidgeotto was stronger, but by draining its energy, Slughorn kept the battle even. In the end, Slughorn pulled through, tackled into the bird, and knocked it out of the sky. Dev returned it to its Pokeball, and Slughorn felt another wave of pride. Then Dev sent out Charmander. 
Charmander hesitantly entered the battlefield. I... I'm sorry, Charmander mumbled. Really, I don't want to hurt you. Don't be sorry, Slughorn insisted. We have to do right by our trainers, no matter what the means. Charmander glanced back at his trainer, and Slughorn saw conflicting emotions play through those eyes. Slughorn understood from that look that Charmander was not happy with his trainer. Not really. Dev was power-hungry and loved winning, but all Charmander wanted was a friend. A friend he couldn't get from his trainer and couldn't even have in his old playmate. It broke Slughorn's heart. Under different circumstances, he would love to have had Charmander on his side. But that was never meant to be. They were destined to be rivals from the moment these trainers chose them. And rivals must do battle. Let's do this, Slughorn said. A tear rolled down Charmander's cheek, boiling off into steam soon after. If I must. Slughorn and Charmander charged into battle. At first they fought as they did before, all tooth and nail, tackles and slams. The two Pokemon appeared to be perfect equals, each landing the same number of hits as the other. Then Charmander shot embers of fire from his mouth. Slughorn was hit by the embers, which singed his grassy leaves. Searing pain covered him, and in his momentary shock, Charmander clawed at him as well. Slughorn stepped back, but the Charmander sent another round of embers after him. The pain was horrible, but Slughorn knew he still had a chance. He waited until Charmander came in for another close attack, then shot a barrage of seeds at him. The seeds embedded into his skin and began leeching the life out of him, just as they did to Pidgeotto. Then Slughorn did something he seldom did. He retreated. Not fleeing the battle, of course, but making a strategic decision to fall back and stall time. If he could put a little distance between him and Charmander, those seeds would work their magic and give him an edge. Slughorn ran, circling the battle area. But Charmander was fast as well and stayed hot on his tail. If Slughorn was to win this, he needed more time. Suddenly, Slughorn stopped. Charmander wasn't expecting that and fell face first on top of Slughorn. Right on top of his flower. Slughorn sent a burst of fine purple powder from the flower. Charmander stumbled backwards, disoriented and confused. Then, after a moment wobbling on his feet, Charmander collapsed. Not knocked out, sleeping. Charmander inhaled a hefty dose of sleep powder, enough to put him under for some time. Seeing that the battle was over, Dev returned Charmander to his Pokeball. Slughorn felt pretty good about himself. He overcame his two great weaknesses, birds and fire. And thanks to his leech seed, he still had some fight left in him. Dev threw another Pokeball, and an Abra appeared. The Abra sat there, eyes closed, unmoving. Slughorn didn't think it was even awake. How was he supposed to battle a sleeping Pokemon? Then, Slughorn heard a voice whispering in his head. What? What the? He muttered. The voice kept speaking, and Slughorn's blood ran cold. He stood frozen, eyes wide, staring at the motionless Pokemon. Even though the Abra didn't move, it seemed to be getting closer and closer and closer. All the while, Slughorn couldn't muster the strength to act. The Abra slowly raised a hand, about to strike Slughorn, when Hannah flew out of nowhere. Snap out of it, she shouted. Slughorn backed away from the fight and let Hannah continue. He saw her battle the Abra and defeat it with ease. But Slughorn couldn't snap out of it. That voice. He couldn't hear it anymore, but he couldn't forget it either. The Abra spoke to him in his mind, and the words alone were enough to paralyze Slughorn, freeze him more fully than a stun spore. In the Tower of the Dead, surrounded by graves, the fearless leader, the broken soldier, 
shall face that which can be delayed but not beaten. The fearless leader shall face his death.